Hey, welcome back. In the last video, we were actually talking about this concept called neutral buoyancy, and we were basically studying three different cases where objects in bodies of water, well, objects fully submerged in bodies of water would either float or sink or stay where they're at. But I wanna talk about a slightly different case in which the object that we're looking at is not fully submerged inside the body of water. So this might be a case where we have, maybe this is uh, some kind of a wooden block, and we kind of know that wooden pieces of wooden blocks tend to float at the top of the surface of the body of water. So this block is partially submerged right there, but most of it is floating above the body of water's surface. So how do we know what the buoyant force acting on this block is, and more importantly, how do we know how much volume of fluid that this block has displaced? Because we do know the volume of the block, but because of its different mass density than the body of liquid, only part of it gets submerged below the surface. So we wanna use what we've studied about mass density of buoyant force, Archimedes' principle, to basically calculate or come up with a relationship that could essentially tell us how much volume of liquid this object that is floating, not fully submerged, displaces. So if we look at this diagram that we have drawn here on the left, and I quickly just put in the free body uh, diagram forces, we know that there's a buoyant force acting upward on this block. So I'm gonna call that F sub B. Now, there's another force, which is the weight of the actual block, and that is going downwards, right? And that is simply mass times gravity. So mass of the object, in, case, in this case, the wooden block times gravity, right? That gives us force. Now, in the last few videos, we did figure out that the buoyant force, the magnitude of the buoyant force, is simply the mass of the fluid that got displaced times gravity. And if we look at mass density, the typical definition of mass density, that is simply rho equals mass over volume. So what I could do is I could rewrite this a tiny bit and I can substitute the mass density of the fluid times the volume of the fluid displaced times gravity, right? So all I did was I looked at this relationship here and I simply solved for mass. So Another way of writing this relationship is mass equals the mass density of the object times volume. And so I substituted this term in for this mass. So great, this is the magnitude of the buoyant force acting on the object. And I wanna be very clear that this is the mass density of the fluid that the body or that the object is in times the volume of the fluid that got displaced times gravity. And in this case, the volume of the fluid that got displaced does not equal the volume of the object itself, right? Because only part of the object is submerged. Now, if we go back to this diagram, we can see that this object or this scenario is in static equilibrium. So the block is floating on top of this body of water. So that must mean if this object is in static equilibrium that the upward force must equal the downward force. So this buoyant force that we found here must equal the mass of the object times gravity, right? The weight of the object. So what I can say is that the mass density of the fluid times the volume of the fluid that got displaced times gravity, right? This is this buoyant force right here. That's going to be equal to the mass of the object times gravity. And again, for this mass right here, I can rewrite that in a slightly different form. So mass density of the fluid times V of the fluid times gravity is equal to the mass density of the object times the volume of the object times gravity. Again, that's just because the mass of the object is equal to the mass density of the object times the volume of the object. So this right here is for the wooden block and this right here is for the fluid that got displaced or the buoyant force. Okay, so in this equation, we can see that the gravitational constant G gets crossed out from both sides of the equation. Now, if we solve for VF, the volume of the fluid that got displaced, 
then we get this equation, mass density of the object divided by the mass density of the fluid times the volume of the object. This is a pretty cool relationship. What this says is that for objects that are not fully submerged inside of a body of liquid, then the volume of fluid that gets displaced, the volume of fluid that gets displaced is equal to the ratio of the mass density of the object divided by the mass density of the fluid times the original volume of the object itself. Now you might have heard this fun fact that 90% of an iceberg, iceberg is under water. So when you go out into the ocean, you see icebergs in obviously colder regions of the world. But we know that about 90% of the iceberg is underwater. And we can prove this by the relationship that we discovered right here by simply knowing the mass density of the object, which is the iceberg, divided by the mass density of the fluid, which is seawater. So if I scroll down a tiny bit, and I draw another diagram. So this is another body of water, but in this body of water, we have this giant iceberg. And again, we know that 90% of an iceberg is underwater. So when we go out into the ocean, we only see this very tip of the iceberg. And so 90% of that iceberg is actually sitting here underwater. So let's actually prove this using this relationship that we found here. And for that, we need a couple of knowns. So the mass density of seawater, so I'm just going to say C, is about 1,030 kilograms per meter cubed. And the mass density of a freshwater iceberg, so mass density of ice, is about 970 kilograms per meter cubed. In this case, the fluid is the seawater, the salty seawater, and the object is the actual iceberg. So we can use these two values and plug them into this relationship, and let's see what we get. So the volume of the fluid, which is the seawater, is equal to the mass density of the object, which is the iceberg, so that is 970 kilograms per meter cubed, divided by the mass density of the fluid, which is this seawater right here. That is 1,030 kilograms per meter cubed times the volume of the object. And the object, again, is the iceberg. So if we solve this out, we get about 0 0.8903. That's the ratio we get when we divide the mass density of the iceberg over the mass density of the seawater. And you can see that right here, that is about 90%, right? 89 point something percent. About 90% of the iceberg is underwater. So that's pretty cool. In the next video, we're actually going to look at this concept and actually use this relationship right here to solve a problem where we figure out what the mass density of an unknown liquid is. All right, so see you then.